My next guest is uh, another digital guest and he is connected with us via Zoom. His uh, topic is energy optimization, storage and control. It's an Austrian-based company, X Electrics Power brings us new innovations and concepts to both on and off-grid applications. We are talking now to an energy and project engineer, Hani Al Saul, and I hope he can hear me loud and clearly and even might see me if that helps. Hani, yes, are yes, you with yes. us? <laughs> yes, I'm with you. Can you hear me? Yes, we do. Good afternoon. Thank you for Good joining afternoon. us. Where are you situated today? From where are you? Now I am in the company actually in, in uh, Upper Austria. Okay. So the distance is not too far, but it's far enough <laughs> that we need to do a digital conference. Please go ahead. Tell us about uh, your insights. Tell us about your company. Tell us what you can contribute to the world of change in terms of um, electricity, energy, charging. Thank you very much. Um, hello, everyone. This is Hania Zoll from Electrix Power Company. I'm very happy and glad to be here in front of you to speak about e-mobility solving increased high energy demands. Go green, go electric. We always hear these words. Everyone wants to be sustainable, innovative, and follow the green way. Today, I'm going to present to you a problem that many companies, industries, and even residentials are facing. And this problem is even going to be bigger in the future. One of these people who follow the go green, go electric phrase is Sabrina. So meet Sabrina, the CEO of a mid-sized company. Sabrina is driven by the sustainable green way and wants to lead her company to be a role model for the other ones and to encourage her employees to use electrical vehicles. So she decides to buy 20 EVs and give them to her employees and to install um, EV charging stations at the company's premises, as well as to install photovoltaic system at the roof of the company to even reduce further the CO2 footprint. So these lucky 20 employees, they come next morning to the company, and of course they want to charge their cars. So they plug the EVs into the charging stations and they switch it on. Suddenly, that there is no electricity. The company is out of power. So Sabrina asked herself, what did really happen? I'm sure everyone here knows what really actually happened. There was a high electricity demand. The grid network was overloaded by all this rush of power. So when we look at this load curve, we can see here what's really happened. Every company, industry, and even houses, they have this kind of a limit for circuit breakers that if you exceed this limit, then you have a problem. In this example, we have this 120 kilowatt, which you can see by this red line. The company has its own also demand, which like includes lightning, security, etc. Now, this introduction of the EV charging stations had led to this kind of a peak, as you can see. And now when they switch these EV charging stations, that goes over this limit, which leads to this power outage. So how to solve Sabrina's problem? There is a problem and it can be solved by three solutions. One, we go to this grid limit. We say to the grid operator, I would like to extend my grid limit. This implies a huge investment cost, maybe new transmission lines, protection devices, new transformer, et cetera, et cetera, and maybe wait for a long time. The other one is to forget about this whole future mobility, forget about the sustainability. The other solution is to have its electric storage system. So with this one, in order to go green and to go electric, we need first to go smart. So why should Sabrina go with electric storage system? One, it, it optimizes the PV system. It also manages and controls these EV charging stations. It combines several applications in one unit, decrease the cost of electricity, also decrease the EV CO2 footprint, as well as reducing the electricity grid congestion, which also prevent from a blackout. So now, Selectrix Power, from the planning until the commissioning, Selectrix Power storage company, they don't only sell the storage as a commodity, we go from the zero, from the feasibility studies until the end of the project. 
So now when we see this load curve again, after a good planning and introducing the storage system, we can see now whenever it is about to go and exceed this limit, the 120 kilowatt, the storage system kicks in and provide this much of energy. We can see the state of the charge of the battery and also the photovoltaic production. The CO2 emission will be reduced by about 70%. And of course, we optimize the storage based on the application. And this one is a 150 kilowatt with a 180 kilowatt hour storage system. A real Sabrina example is in UPS in the Expo Dubai 2020. It's a 100% CO2 free, 100% self-sufficiency, no electricity from the electrical network, nothing from the diesel generator. It's fully powered by renewable sustainable energy with an 80 kilowatt power and 200 kilowatt hour battery capacity. Another example is also in Austria. It's a solar system that has 250 kilowatt power and a 360 kilowatt hour battery capacity. It's used for PV optimization, backup and EV bead sharing. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Hani. Um, one of my questions is, you mentioned in your presentation, the storage is smart. How smart is Selectric's storage? Well, um, Selectric's battery storage system is smart by the things it can do. It's not just a battery to be charged and discharged. It is a, a whole operating system. It can work in both on and off the grid and island applications. It can control the generator, when to turn it on, when to turn it off, the ramping, to do peak shaving, load shifting, um, for the also power, uh, power factor compensation. Additionally, it also can control the loads by set of personalized rules. Like for example, to turn on or off uh, a load if the state of charge of the battery reaches a certain limit. Um, to do load shifting based on the energy, uh, price using ABI external links. These all the things defined as a smart storage system. Another question that arouses uh, is, can the demand side management be used to control the EV high charging power instead of having such a storage system? Well, yes and no. I would say demand side management kind of was kind of used to reduce this power taken from the grid whenever it reaches the limit. But this means, however, that the grid will always be on this limit. Also, I would say like, who wants to plug his or her car to charge it fast? And after half an hour, the car has barely charged 50%. Why? Because this demand side management says the car is not a priority and needs to wait longer time. We live in a time where being fast is not an option. It's kind of a necessity. So with electric storage, a fast charging means always fast, not properly fast. Well, if we can rely on fast, then I totally agree with you. It's an, an asset and not just luxury. So exactly. Thank you. Thank you very much for contributing. Um, of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can book uh, also one to one meetings via our B2 Match platform with our contributors who are not here in the house, but of course, honey, you will be ready to do any talk uh, which arouses to do some new connections. Thank you very oh, much. Yeah, thank you. Have a good afternoon and bye-bye.